Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Um, we're going to do, start class vocabulary today, as I said, but I wanted to make a comment on something in the news. Normally, I would not do that, but uh, I think I will. Uh, it's it's very much in the news at the moment. The M Monsanto's seed company has uh, is involved in a, a Supreme Court uh, case uh, over its genetically engineered seeds and, and whether or not a farmer has the right to buy the seeds and then grow them and then save some of his seeds for the next year. It's a very, very interesting case. But anyway, uh, why I mention that now is because it pertains to polyculture. One of the main reasons I'm going to Portugal is to study polyculture. Of course, this is all about monoculture. Uh, another thing, uh, I had said that, that there's a morality involved in my kilocalories as currency that I'm not really quite ready to explain in detail, but it is. Uh, there is, and I think the Supreme Court actually is having to face that uh, at the moment. Now, kilocalories as currency, I'm probably going to speak about that enough that I'm going to say henceforth K-A-C, CAC. I'm going to make that abbreviation because kilocalories as currency <laughs> takes too long to takes too long to write. Uh, and then finally, I'll introduce the word decentral decentralism decentralism as a political philosophy. Uh, I wish, in a way, that this these ideas and this idea could be in the minds of the Supreme Court judges as they tackle this decision. Uh, well, I didn't, uh, there's, there's just stuff to think about. Uh, of this, I think there might be five people in the world right now that understand what I'm talking about. My German friend Thomas, he probably knows. Uh, my neighbor Andy, uh, that you saw mining iron ore. He probably understands, and maybe a few others. But anyway, let's go on with this. Now, I, uh, I have not had response from online, people supplying me words. So what I've done is, is I've gone to the notes of a former student, uh, uh, 2003, Patricia Defabal. <laughs> uh, what I used to do is, is copy, uh, ask permission of course, and then photocopy sets of notes if they were particularly nice. And Patricia Defabal had, had really nice notes. And I saved uh, some of this, the class vocabulary part. So. My thanks to Patricia Defabal. Here are her, it says, my vocabulary words, section 15, first page. And uh, from her, I gave an example conveyed, and then so I would call on her, I would say, okay, we'll begin the class with class vocabulary, who has a word, and there's Patricia with her hand up. And she says, catechism. And I would, or no, I'm sorry, catechist. And I would write that on the board if I could, and then I would say, is that spelled right? And, you know, the kids were usually amazed that I, I, I could spell pretty well. And if so, I'd say, okay, I underlined it, and I'd tell the students, now you may copy the word uh, onto your page, the classes, ibid, the classes of vocabulary words. And I don't think catechist was one. Uh, but I'm going to work with, with her words. Uh, so this, this word was probably never supplied. Uh, and then I'll say, okay, what's the context? Good old Patricia, she had done her work, and she would tell me, told him of my catechist, he shook his head. And they didn't have to write a lot, just, just enough so that uh, we could see how it fit. Uh, and I might at that point say to her, where did you get that word? Uh, the documentation of sources. That's what that little two is from. And I, I didn't write it down, but on her uh, page, she would have down here had a two after the one, and uh, and there it would say that she got it from. Uh oh, oh, I was looking at the class. I didn't make the class copy that down. Two uh, from uh, Kidnap by Robert Louis Stevenson, and I'd made this at page page 114. I didn't make them say the, the copyright date and the public publisher. I, I just, th that would have taken all the fun out of it. And I'd usually compliment her for reading such a good book. Well, in fact, by this time, I was supplying kids with classics and, and having them read for a few minutes uh, in order to, to get these words. 
But anyway, I'd, I'd thank her. And then I'd say to the class, does anybody, oh, I'd say, how is it pronounced? She pronounced it right. Which is the stressed syllable? Catechist. And, uh, and they couldn't always hear it. But anyway, eventually, then I'd go back to Patricia and say, well, what did the dictionary say? And she'd say, catechist, the first one. And then I'd say, does anybody know what it means? Well, nobody would have. I, I didn't even know what this meant. Uh, now and then, <clears throat> through this process, you would get words that really weren't very useful. Uh, but she had, in fact, run into this word that she did not know the meaning of. And it had fewer than uh, four syllables, three syllables or less. I, I'll, later, maybe I'll explain to you why I did that. So she'd done it right, and then I'd say, uh, or, or before that even, I would say, okay, what part of speech is it? And even if they didn't know what it meant, they should, the student should have been able to say that that's a noun. And I, I let them guess, and it usually troubled me that they didn't immediately know. I would tell them there should be no doubt about that. This is clearly, it's the object of a preposition of my catechist. It's modified. This is a noun, so it's naming something. I was always pounding away at trying to get the kids to understand that words are certain parts of speech. Well, no one knew what it meant. People would like to guess. They, they, I'd let them guess about three of them if they would, and they usually would. Then I'd go back to Patricia and say, well, what does it mean? And she's looked it up. And she says, a person who questions someone closely. Um, I think it's also a person who teaches the catechism. But it, I, was, I, I sort of knew in advance I wasn't going to use this word at the end of the week. Uh, because it was too rare. Then I'd ask the students, okay, where do you suppose that came from? What's the etymology of that word? What's, what's the word's etymology? And they would guess. Sometimes they would get good, but I would tell them, now this is going to be wild. Unlike the part of speech, you may not be able to guess this one, uh, but what do you think? And I'd get guesses all over the place. Sometimes at that point, kids would just get ornery and say Japanese or uh, Irish or something. Uh, and I would guess. My guess probably would have been Greek, and that's what it is. It, uh, but I, I had to look that up because uh, Patricia didn't have it there. I'm not sure why. Maybe, maybe it was the first word and she didn't realize that was expected. Um, and then I would thank her. Go to the next uh, uh, word. Uh, anyone else have a word? Nobody? So I go back to Patricia. Uh, parapet. Okay. Uh, parapet, and I'd try to write it. I'd probably write it here in the middle because I wouldn't know the context yet. Uh, am I saying it right? Parapet? And she'd say, yeah, and I'd say to the class, well, which is the stressed syllable? And you, eventually certain kids would get good at that. I never understood why they couldn't hear it immediately. Parapet. It's not parapet. It's not parapet. It's parapet. Uh, then I'd say, what's the context? Uh, a projection at the end of the parapet. And the ellipsis, of course, indicates that there was more before it, there was more after it. Uh, and Patty, where did you uh, get that word, oh, Patricia? And uh, from uh, Red Hall by Brian Jacques, or J Jaques, I don't know, page 68, Red Wall, Red Wall. Now that's probably a book she was actually reading herself. And uh, uh, I'd thank her, and I'd say, all right, uh, what part of speech is it? And they would guess, and they should know, this is a noun. This is a noun of the parapet, probably. I mean, they can't, I'd, I'd tell them, if, well, maybe there could be another word after it, and it could be an adjective. Anybody know what it means? Um, well, I'd go back to Patricia and say, is it a noun? Yep, yep. Uh, a low wall or mound of stone on a castle. And if she had a definition <clears throat> which was hard to understand, or the kids weren't going to understand it, we'd talk, I'd, I would constantly adjust the definition until we came up with something we understood. And then I'd say, okay, uh, what's uh, anybody want to guess the etymology? That ET at the end, para, that looks like, you know, they'd guess, I'd guess, I'd say, well, that looks like Latin, that T at the end looks a little bit like French. And I'd ask them to take it back as far as they could. And in this, I probably would have said French. I would have been wrong. You go back to Patricia, and she says, no, it came from Italian. <clears throat> now, I didn't make the kids memorize that. That was just for fun. The frosting on the vocabulary cake, as Doc Blanchard used to say. 
I would thank her. <clears throat> And then, uh, okay, one more word. I would Toward the end, I would take three. When I first did this, uh, way back when I was first teaching, I would take four words a day with seventh graders. Um, but I had so much else to teach, and eventually I didn't do this nearly as much, very little toward the end. Uh, bolster, I'd write it down. Uh, is that spelled right? Uh, yeah. Who can hear? Am I pronouncing it right? Yeah. Who can hear which is stressed? And eventually they come up with the first part. It's bolster. It's not bolster. It's bolster. What's the context? Ellipsis purchased cattle to bolster his herd. Okay, can anybody figure out what part of speech it is? Uh, uh, and uh, they should be able to say it is a verb. To do something. To do something. Uh, I never made it a transitive or an intransitive verb. It was enough for me to just say it was a verb. Uh, does anybody know what it means? And so, this, a word like that, somebody might know, but I would finally go back to Patricia and ask her to keep from falling or decreasing. Uh, and I might add to support. I might put a comma and, and support or something like that. I wasn't bound to the dictionary. I uh, would adjust it so the kids could use it, saying, well, where did you get that word? Uh, and she would be ready. That one came from... Oh, that's the one that, no, this, this would have been a four. Love's Long Journey by Janet Oak. She must have been a reader, page 160. Uh, I guess there would have been a four here. <clears throat> All right, so we have three words, and I would thank her for that. Uh, the etymology, anybody want to guess at that? And they would guess around. I don't know if I would have got this right. I might have. Old English, Patricia had looked at all right, now I would go back and say, can somebody put the word catechist in a sentence? I'd take about three kids. Um, my catechist was wrong. Good. Uh, I don't know how my catechist got so smart. Good. Uh, uh, how about this one in, in a sentence? Parapet. I jumped off the parapet. Good. They threw boiling oil off the parapet. Good. Uh, bolster. Uh, I need to bolster my money. Uh, I need to bolster the fence so it doesn't fall over. Good, good. And I'd get about three. And then I would say, all right, how about two in one sentence? Uh, the catechist jumped off the parapet. And then, what's a catechist? After the lesson, the catechist jumped off the parapet. Okay, good. Because they had to always prove to me that they knew what the words meant. Uh, how about these two? Um, since he couldn't bolster his herd, he committed suicide by jumping off a parapet. Good, good. And the kids already would start to get excited about these sentences that they were coming up with. Uh, I'd get a bunch. Can anybody put all three? And by now, I'd usually have lots of hands going up because they, they, they would have them. And so somebody would say, uh, since the catechist couldn't teach his students how to bolster their herd, he committed suicide by jumping off the parapet. Great, and and I would get two or three, and then on we would go. All right, that was. I spoke too fast. I'm sorry for you viewers who don't speak English, but I didn't want this to take too long. Uh, to be continued. Tomorrow we'll get three more words, and eventually we'll get going on those field trips. See you then.